ஹாய் ஹலோ வணக்கம் அண்ட் வெல்கம் பேக் டு எட் அனதர் எபிசோட் ஆன் லெட்டல்ஸ் லா யூடியூப் சேனல் ஸோ டுடே இன் திஸ் வீடியோ வி வில் சி வாட் இஸ் தி டைம் டு ஃபர்ஸ்ட் பைட் அண்ட் திஸ் இஸ் பார்ட் ஆஃப் தி கிளைண்ட் சைட் பர்ஃபார்மன்ஸ் டெஸ்டிங் ஸோ வி வில் சி வாட் இஸ் தி டைம் டு ஃபர்ஸ்ட் பைட் அண்ட் ஹவு கேன் திஸ் ஹெல்ப் அஸ் இன் இம்ப்ரூவிங் தி பர்ஃபார்மன்ஸ் ஆஃப் தி வெப் அப்ளிகேஷன் ஆர் தி வெப் பேஜ் ஸோ ஃபர்ஸ்ட் லெட் மீ டெல் யூ அ குவிக் எக்ஸாம்பிள் ஆஃப் the time to first byte with a very common example so exa- so imagine you are in a restaurant and you have placed an order for your food so the time to first byte is like the time it takes for the waiter to bring the first dish from the kitchen to your table so you for example you have ordered the starters you have ordered a biryani for your lunch or you have ordered a full meal for your lunch and you are waiting for the server to serve your dish so the very first dish whatever it can be it can be either a starter or it can be any other starters which you have ordered any one of the starters which which has come to your table for the first time or uh, for the first uh, the quickest one so that is the time to first byte so let's now see what is time to first byte in the context of website and web applications and before that this is me your vasan shanmugam please do subscribe to our youtube channel if you have not subscribed yet for more performance testing and performance engineering related videos and like share and comment the videos with your questions and feedbacks so now let's see what is the time to first byte so in the context of the website on web applications the time to first byte measures the time it takes for our computer or device to send a request to the server and for the server to send back the first piece of information as a response so it represents the time it takes for the server to start providing the data that we requested so how can we see the time to first byte so in the browser if we press f12 we will open the developer tool so this is one option there is another option where we have the performance analyzer tool so we will see about this performance analyzer tool separately in our another video so we will see here a list of metrics so in this we have the time to first byte so for this amazon.co.uk the very first byte that we have that is re- that have reached us is is at 66th millisecond so now let's see what is a fast time to first byte mean so this means that the server is quick to respond and we will start seeing something on our screen sooner on the other hand if it is slow the first time the, the time to first byte is slow which means the server takes a longer to respond and we will have to wait longer before any content appears and this time to first byte can be influenced by various factors so what are those factors it can be uh, Uh, the speed of our internet connection the distance between us and the server and how busy the server is so by optimizing the time to first byte the web developers can make sure that the websites and the web applications load quickly allowing the users to access content faster and have a smoother browsing experience so why this time to first byte is basically very important for a performance engineer or for the developer so a fast time to first byte indicates that the server is able to quickly process the request and send back the initial data allowing the browser to start rendering the web page promptly and this is a crucial for a positive user experience as users expect the websites to load quickly and display content without significant delay so for example in case if i am using if i'm trying to launch the iostc.co.uk dot in this is this is the common website this is the most common everyone in india must know when they are trying to book their train tickets and when we see the time to first byte for this so it's still loading so let me open it so here you can see the time to first byte is 2 seconds it's more than 2 seconds and when we see for amazon.co.uk it's just 66 milliseconds and that's the difference so what happens if the time to first byte is slow so a slow time to first byte means it takes longer for the server to respond and it results in delayed loading of the web page and this can lead to longer waiting times which increases the frustration and potentially higher bounce rates as users may abandon the page so in fact this there is 
much lesser option to book for the ISDC for the train tickets. But in case if you are trying to use Argos, for example, let me open the argos.co.uk. So let me check the time to first wait. So here it's like 222 milliseconds, which is almost closer to the Amazon.co.uk. And what if we, if I check the Curry's? So when I try to open the Curry's website, let me just open it. So if I open the Curry's website, so let me check the performance analysis so here it's just 573 milliseconds so for argos it's 222 and for curry's it's 573 and for amazon it is just 60 seconds so which one we will go for the lesser time to first byte exactly yes so how can we improve the time to first byte so what can be done for this so how can we improve the time to first byte because we all know this in fact improves the performance and again it, it gives a better experience to the users so the first way to improve the performance is by optimizing the server-side processing so the very first recommendations is to optimize the server-side processing by evaluating the server-side processing of our application and identifying the potential areas of, opti of optimization and this includes optimizing the database queries, improving server-side scripting, reducing unnecessary computations or any input-output operations and ensuring efficient resource utilization. And when it comes to the minimizing the network latency, so the network latency plays a significant role in the time to first byte. So to reduce latency, we should consider utilizing content delivery networks, which is the CDNs, to deliver static assets closer to the user's location and additionally enable HTTP2 or other protocols that support multiplexing and parallelism to reduce the number of round trips required to fetch resources. And next comes the implementation of caching. So caching can greatly improve the time to first byte by reducing the need for the server to regenerate the response for each request and implementing the server-side caching mechanisms such as HTTP caching, headers or in-memory caching to serve cached responses for subsequent requests with the same parameters. And next comes using the efficient data retrieval techniques. So when fetching data from databases or external APIs, by optimizing the queries or requests to retrieve only the necessary data. So by utilizing the database indexing or by utilizing the query optimization techniques and data aggregation to minimize the time required for data retrieval. And next comes the utilizing asynchronous operations. So offload time consuming operations to background processes or by utilizing asynchronous programming techniques. And this allows the server to handle multiple requests concurrently improving the responsiveness and reducing the time spent in the server queue and next comes the optimizing of server configuration so when it comes to the optimizing of server configuration we should review our server configuration and ensure it is properly tuned for performance and this involves adjusting server parameters such as connection limits the thread pool sizes the timeouts to handle the concurrent requests efficiently and then next comes the monitoring and analyzing the performance. So we should regularly monitor and analyze the performance of our application to identify the bottlenecks and areas for improvement. So how can we do this? So we can do this using the profiling tools, the performance monitoring and login to gain insights into the performance characteristics of our application and guide our tuning efforts. And then when it comes to considering the load balancing and scaling, so if our application experiences high traffic or increased load, consider scaling our infrastructure horizontally or vertically. So adding more servers, distribute the load across multiple instances or by utilizing load balancing techniques to handle the incoming requests more effectively and efficiently. And then finally, when it comes to prioritizing critical resources, we should ensure, the developer should ensure that critical resources required for the initial rendering of the web page such as CSS and JavaScript files are prioritized and loaded early in the page load process. And this helps to minimize the time to first byte and provide a faster initial rendering of the page. 
So by implementing all these tuning recommendations, we can optimize the time to first bed and the overall performance and this results in faster response times. And in fact, this is just one metric and in fact, this in will improve the overall performance by improving the user experience and by higher user satisfaction. However, it is important to note that the specific recommendations may vary depending on our application's architecture, the technology stack and performance characteristics. So overall, this is all about the time to first byte. So for more interesting and informative videos on performance engineering and testing, please do subscribe to our YouTube channel. Until I meet you in another interesting video, it's bye-bye from Vasan Shanmugam and Little's Law.